here and turn off my phone. <clears throat> welcome. Good morning. Um, if you're here regularly, we welcome you back. And if you're a visitor, we welcome you for sure. And if you're online, we welcome you as well. <clears throat> we uh, are now going to pass the peace. And this isn't just your peace. This is the peace of God that passeth all understanding. You can pass the peace. <laughs> Sometimes I think we need more music. <clears throat> if you will now join me uh, in singing our opening hymn, uh, number 135.
if you'll turn with me to the back of the program. <clears throat> Announcements. Um, you can read those for yourself. There's a cabinet meeting today, ministry meetings today. Tomorrow, uh, serving Hope Campus. Um, Tuesday, it looks like uh, Lunch Bunch and DWF, Chancellor Choir Rehearsal, DWF Group 3 at 6. Thursday, Crazy Crafters and Youth Activity. Looking ahead uh, on the 24th, we'll have a Christmas Eve candlelight service at 6 o'clock. Under prayer concerns, Alan Maxey family requests uh, continued prayer. Conrail Bales apparently had surgery on Thursday, and as I understand, he's doing all right. Dorothy Robertson's in comfort care, and the family request continued prayer. And my daughter, Skye, uh, had surgery Monday, and even though she thought she was going to die, she didn't. And uh, I, I appreciate your, your prayers, and uh, she is recovering nicely now. So, And uh, along with that, my great-granddaughter, Arlette, uh, is still being treated uh, for cancer and uh, so far successfully, looks like. <clears throat> Are there any other uh, announcements or prayer requests or birthdays, anniversaries? Yes, ma'am. All the help to keep things going is surely appreciated, yes. No birthdays? Yes, ma'am. My niece, Caitlin, um, she had surgery on her arm, so she's wearing a couch right now, so keep running. Your niece, Caitlin? Caitlin. Had surgery. Okay. Needs prayers. Anyone else? I can't believe we didn't have a birthday or something. Okay. Thank you, thank you, thank you. Beloved, I wish you could see what I am looking at right now. And the only way I can describe it is the heavenly host. You look good this morning, you really do. To my heart and to my spirit. And you are wonderful, wonderful people. I'm not just saying that you know how to step up as a congregation, and I continue to be impressed. You stepped up on Tuesday when we were out at the park, and almost all of you were there. We had fun. We sang hymns. We gave out hot chocolate and cookies. And I want to thank Mr. and Mrs. Santa for being there and, uh, be, and allowing others to take photos of them. I want to thank some of you who were there on Thursday morning to support uh, Conrad uh, Bells, and Conrad had a successful surgery. It was kind of touch and go, because once they went in, you know, sometimes they find things that they were not expecting, but he came out all right. We want to continue to pray for him. Some of you drove Friday evening to be with the Foster family uh, at the visitation of Warren John, and we really appreciate your presence. Some of you were there yesterday at the funeral. Uh, many of you, thank you for driving that long way to be there. And a funeral it was even though it was sad, it was very sad, but we thank you and we need to continue to support that family. I also want to mention that Kim Kidder and I have a very special friend who is a nurse at Mercy. She's been a nurse for close to 37 years. No one knows how many lives that she has helped and be responsible for saving and last week, her son took his own life. 
And this young lady is really struggling. Normally I would not, you know, mention some of these things, but she is really struggling. And I thank Kim for being such a good friend to her. And uh, we want to mention her. her name is Lisa Myers. Some of you may know Lisa. She's been there a long, long time and uh, she's really struggling. So thank you, First Christian, for being the congregation that you are and your support to me. You, you don't have to, but you do. And I really appreciate it. I really do. So now if you would stand with me and we go to our call to worship. Great is the Lord and greatly to be praised and his greatness is unsearchable. The Lord is nigh unto all them that call upon him. We are standing on holy ground, and we know that there are angels all around. Let us praise Jesus now. We are standing in his presence on holy ground. How awed and humbled we are knowing that we are permitted to come and bring our petitions to this holy altar. But we do not come alone. We acknowledge that we are here, surrounded by unseen angels, standing in the presence of our Lord and Savior, Jesus Christ. Therefore, we are filled with praise. We magnify your holy name. We pray for the Upchurch Foster family and the memory of Warren John Upchurch. We pray for Lisa Myers as she struggles with her son's death. We come on behalf of the Maxey family. We lift up Dorothy Robertson, who is in comfort care. Thank you for bringing Sky Randolph Francis through her surgery this week, as well as Conrad Bells. And we also add Caitlin to that list. We thank you. Give them all healing, Lord. There may be others under the sound of my voice who are struggling privately with some sickness or health challenge. You know who they are. Please comfort them all and meet their needs. Please touch our world with your love and bring peace in war-torn countries. Bring peace in our government and bring peace in us. We ask all these things in the name of our Lord and Savior, Jesus Christ, who taught us that when we pray, say, Our Father.
It says Christmas offering in the uh, printed bulletin, and we uh, heard from the uh, main office that said the materials will not be here until this week. And so uh, on next week, we will have a presentation for the Christmas offering. Now we will have the lighting of the Advent candle piece. Good morning. Good morning, from the book of Isaiah. They will not hurt or destroy on all my holy mountain, for the earth will be full of the knowledge of the Lord as the waters cover the sea. On that day, the root of Jesse shall stand as a signal to the peoples. The nations shall inquire of him, and his dwelling shall be glorious. That's Isaiah chapter 11, verses 9 and 10. We are the followers of that root of Jesse Isaiah spoke of. We are the ones who are now called to stand as a signal to the world, to all of creation, that peace is the will of the one who created us. Peace is the knowledge of the Lord that we proclaim from sea to shining sea. From the book of Matthew, in those days, John the Baptist appeared in the wilderness of Judea proclaiming, repent for the kingdom of heaven has come near and bear fruit worthy of repentance. That's Matthew chapter three, verses one, two, and eight. We light these candles, the candle of joyful hope and the candle of proclaimed peace in part to remind ourselves that we are a people rising towards God's promise but we also light them as a sign to the world, an announcement, there are some who hold on to hope and there are some who work the ways of peace. We stand as a sign that Emmanuel is still our fervent prayer. Scripture reading this morning comes from Luke chapter 2, verse 8 through 14. We found on page 833 in your pew Bible, if you care to follow along. <clears throat> in that region, there were shepherds living in the fields, keeping watch over the flock by night. Then an angel of the Lord stood before them, and the glory of the Lord shone around them, and they were terrified. But the angel said to them, Do not be afraid. For see, I am bringing you good news of great joy for all the people. To you is born this day in the city of David a Savior, who is the Messiah, the Lord. This will be a sign for you. You will find the child wrapped in the bands of cloth and lying in a manger. And suddenly there was with the angel a multitude of heavenly hosts, praising God and saying, Glory to God in the highest heaven, and on earth peace among those whom he favors. This is the word of God for the people of God.
Thank you for the very special music. Nothing more beautiful than piano, organ, and bells. The scripture that you heard found in Luke chapter 2, 
really focuses on verse 14. And the most popular version of that text is the King James Version that says, Glory to God in the highest, and on earth peace, goodwill toward men. Once again, we've been blessed to see another Advent season, and without question, there is a great mystery surrounding the birth of Jesus, the Son of God. And to understand the mystery of Christmas is to attempt to understand the mystery that is God. The message of Christmas is clear. The message is God loves us so much that he used a strange and mysterious method to come to us to save us. I keep saying that because I want you to remember that. Who could have imagined that a newborn baby lying in a manger wrapped in rags, basically, could mean so much to a sin-sick world? Christmas means that there is nothing that God would not do, nothing that God would not use to save us from the penalty of sin and hell. Christmas is about God's love for us. And you've heard it said, Jesus is the reason for the season. Jesus, the Son of God, who came to save us so that ultimately we might have a right to the tree of life when we leave this place. That means that Jesus cares about what happens to us, where we spend eternity. But make no mistake about it. Jesus not only cares about us and is concerned about what happens to us beyond this life, he is also concerned about how we live with each other here on earth if we intend to spend eternity together in heaven. Jesus is the Christ who brings people together. He came to reconcile humanity back to God and to teach us how to reconcile with one another when we fall out, as we sometimes do. He came to bring joy to the world. And he came to be, bring peace, unity, and harmony. And allow me to hurry up and say, there can never be lasting peace on earth or any meaningful goodwill toward men without Jesus at the peace table. Jesus came that we might have life abundantly, but what is life? without unity and harmony? What is life without peace? Jesus came to bring peace on earth and goodwill toward all men. And that word men means humanity, ladies. This was the essence of the message that the angel who appeared to the shepherds that dark, cold, windy night when he declared, Glory to God in the highest, and on earth peace, goodwill toward men, according to the King James Version. And these were the last words they spoke before they returned to heaven. But as I evaluate the current condition of the world on this December morning, 2023, I am sad to report that there seems to be very little peace. It seems that the message the angels delivered on that starlit night to those shepherds was either wrong or we misunderstood the message or somewhere along the way the message has gotten lost or even ignored. On this bleak December morning, 
Humanity is as far apart as it's ever been in my lifetime, globally, nationally, socially, culturally, and even religiously. And I don't mean any biblical or spiritual disrespect. And I'm sure that there are one or two of you here this morning who will agree with me. But I have a question that I would like to ask the angel. I know that there are angels around. And I really don't expect an answer. But I have a question to those angels who gave the message that night. And the question is this. Where is the peace? Where is the goodwill toward men here in 2023? Things are not only bad, but seem to be getting progressively worse. Where is the peace? Please bear with me. I've not lived as long as some, but longer than others. In all my life, I've heard discussions about bringing peace to the Middle East. And it still has not happened. We are no closer to bringing Israel and the Palestinians together than we were when I was a little boy. Where's the peace? Please be patient as I give a brief report. This year alone, there have been over 600 recorded incidents of mass shootings here in America. Here, on our own home front, there is daily battle on Capitol Hill with Democrats and Republicans engaged in slander, finger pointing, and fault finding on the floor of Congress and the House of Representatives while neglecting the needs of the people who have elected them and whose interests they swore to uphold. Where's the peace? Where is the goodwill? Without question, we live in a society whose credo is do unto others before they do unto you. Only the strong survive, and he who is left standing at the end of the day with the most toys wins. Where is the peace and where is the goodwill? I started asking the question because Jesus is the Prince of Peace, is he not? Did he not come to bring peace on earth and goodwill toward men? That's what the angel said. Then where is the peace? Now, I was almost ready to give up on the notion of peace on earth and goodwill toward men until David showed up in my Bible and reminded me of something he said in Psalm 27, 13 when he confessed, I had fainted, given up, almost quit, unless I had believed to see the goodness of the Lord in the land of the living. Then the Holy Spirit stopped by and said, wait a minute, preacher, before you arrive at some false conclusion and give up on whether there will ever be peace on earth and goodwill toward men, why don't you examine this text? Why don't you look at Luke 2.14? Examine what the angels said to those shepherds. Eat the words. Meditate on it a while and see what happens. And lo and behold, there it was. I saw the formula for peace right there in verse 14. There can be peace on earth and goodwill toward men, but there is something that must happen first. Look at verse 14 of this text where it says, Glory to God in the highest, and on earth peace, goodwill toward men. There it is. The text begins with our posturing before God. There can never be real peace without humbling ourselves before God First, glory to God in the highest precludes peace between nations, peace between governments, peace on the job, peace in your house, and peace in you. Without God, there is no peace. Without Jesus, there is 
no standing understanding of goodwill because he is the peace, you've heard it said, that passes all understanding in Philippians 4 and 7. <clears throat> Many have defined peace as the absence of war. But in John 14, 27, Jesus says there is a different definition for the believer when he says, peace I leave with you. My peace I give unto you, not as the world gives you, I unto you, but let not your hearts be troubled, neither let it be afraid. Jesus' peace is internal and has to do with the contentment of the heart and soul. We can never have peace until we are at peace peace. And as children of God, we will never be at peace without Jesus. The very gates of hell can be breaking loose all around us, but when we have Jesus' peace, it won't let hell break in on us and won't let us break down. There's a songwriter named Douglas Miller who wrote a very popular gospel song. These are the words. Though the storms keep on raging in my life, and sometimes it's hard to tell the night from day, still that hope that lies within us reassured, as I keep my eyes upon that distant shore, I know he'll lead me to that blessed place he has prepared. But if the storms don't cease, and the winds keep on blowing. My soul is anchored in the Lord. This is the blessed assurance that no matter how bad things look and sound or feel on the six o'clock news, we have a peace that won't allow us to worry, won't allow us to be afraid, won't allow us to do anything stupid and run ahead of the Lord. It, has then, it was then that the Holy Spirit told me, calm down, God's got this. The angel called it glory to God in the highest. That's not the same thing as Shekinah glory. Shekinah glory is what we experience because we feel God, we see God and we hear God. But glory to God in the highest is our response to Shekinah glory. It's the highest praise we give to God. When I graduated from Central Theological Seminary in Kansas City in 1989, a distinction was placed beside my name on the diploma that said cum laude. And when I asked what that meant, I was told, you graduated with honors. You did a good job. But had you done a little better with your GPA, you would have been magna cum laude. <laughs> High honor. But if you had really applied yourself, then you would have been summa cum laude, which means highest honor. What the angel of the Lord was telling these shepherds is when you give God summa cum laude praise, your highest praise, then you will be at peace and peace will be in you and only then can we experience the highest peace on earth and the highest goodwill toward men. It starts with the highest praise to God. And we can never have peace externally until we are at peace internally. Peace begins in the heart and in the soul, not at the peace table. Then when we are at peace and have peace in our hearts and, the, and so we can have peace of mind. Your mind will lie to you, as it often does, convince you of things that are unreal, 
things that are not true, clutter your thoughts with fear and worry. And many of us are troubled today because we don't have peace of mind. I discovered the hard way that the only way I can have peace of mind is to have peace in my heart and my soul first. And since Jesus is the captain of my soul, I can only have peace when I have Jesus, and Jesus has me. Lest you think I've forgotten the title of the sermon, The God of Peace, Peace on earth, goodwill toward men, as the angel proclaimed. The word we use with peace of God brings people together is reconciliation. Whenever two parties are at odds and they need to come together for the greater good, there needs to be reconciliation. There will never be peace on earth without the peace of God who reconciles us to our enemies and folk we have a hard time getting along with. But it starts with glory to God in the highest because you may not realize your problem may not be with others, it might be you. It might be that you and God have fallen out. And when you fall out with God, you fall out with everyone else in your life. When Adam sinned, he destroyed our relationship with God. And we needed to be reconciled back to God. Jesus is our reconciler, according to Romans 5 and 10. Only Jesus could make us right in the sight of God because of his death and resurrection. We are now friends with God instead of enemies with God. He reconciled us back to God. And if Jesus can mend the rift we had with God, don't you think he can do something about bringing peace to your marriage? Bring peace on your job? That neighbor you don't like and who doesn't like you? And I think I'm meddling now. Matthew 519 says, blessed are the peacemakers for they shall be called the children of God. We've been given the ministry of reconciliation as disciples of Christ, and I am proud to say that I am one. Our statement of identity begins by saying, we are disciples of Christ, a movement for wholeness in a fragmented world. We are charged with trying to make peace promote justice and offer compassion, or in the words of Rodney King, can't we all just get along? Let's be honest. You are not going to like everybody you meet. That's the truth. But you ought to at least try to get along with them. And you can with Jesus. His death is the foundation for peace that can happen when he is invited to the peace table. Our problem in 2023 might not have been the other fella. It may just be us. Jesus came that we might have peace between you and me, Palestinians and Israelis, Ukrainians and Russians, Democrats and Republicans white men and black men. But when we all reconcile and we come to the table, guess who will be seated at the head of the table waiting on us to come? It will be Jesus, Son of God. Thank you, Lord, for your word and your understanding of the word. Lord, there is peace. If we would only accept it and give you the praise. In Jesus' name. Amen.
At least I had the same sermon on my paper. <clears throat> this is our invitation to communion. All are welcome. When you do come down to communion, come down the outer aisle, and when you return, go up the center aisle, please. <clears throat> because Christ has redeemed us with his blood, shed on the cross, we who were once enemies of our God are now redeemed, brought as near as the heart of Jesus, and have peace with our God. What a... What a, <clears throat> what a price he's paid. Let us remember him. Beloved, as the household of faith, we come to this place in expectation every Sunday of peace, a peaceful place, peaceful atmosphere. But of all the places in this holy, sacred house of God, this table is the table of peace. This is where we come as community. This is where we come as family. This is where we come, invite strangers. We bring them to this table. This is the table that precludes the peace table because it is the table of peace. And as Jesus gave to Paul, instructed him to take the loaf, which represents his body. Jesus took it on the night that he was betrayed. He broke it. He gave thanks. He said, this is my body, which is for you. Do this in remembrance of me. And in like manner, he took the cup and he said, this is the new covenant in my blood. Do this whenever you drink it in remembrance of me. For whenever you eat this bread, you drink of this cup, you show forth the Lord's death until he comes. Now, family, come to the table.
Pray with me. Our Father, we humbly bow before thee now and give thee thanks for all that thy, thou hast given us in thy Son. We would return unto thee thanks now and some portion of our goods to be used in your service in this world. We thank thee now for all and ask all in the name of our Lord Jesus the Christ. Amen. Please remain standing as I extend the invitation to discipleship. This is a response to anyone here today who desires to unite with this church congregation and be one of us officially, or someone who wants to accept Christ as their personal Lord and Savior for the first time. We're going to sing the hymn, let there be peace on earth found on 677 and as we sing if you have a desire to come please come Now unto the God who is able to keep you from falling and to present you before his glorious presence without fault, with great joy to the only God, our Savior, be glory, majesty, power, and authority through Jesus Christ, our Lord, before all ages now and forevermore, let the church say together, Amen. God bless you. God keep you. Go in peace. <laughs>